evening sir thank you and uh, i'm going to talk on optimal solution for hofa fracture management and uh, the problems we commonly face are hofa fractures are often missed because it, these are coronal plane fractures not easily seen on x rays and uh, we also have problem on visualization of the fracture reduction and getting a stable fixation and then this short distal fragment can be difficult this makes it to makes us mobilize the patient later resulting in stiffness or it can result in mal reduction and failure of fixation so the objective of this presentation is to know various approaches familiarize with those approaches and know when to use them to learn a few reduction tip and to know which implant to choose based on the fracture type so that we can get a stable fixation to mobilize the patient early and get a good fun early functional recovery as as <clears throat> already told in previous presentations so uh, sorry to interrupt dr vail yep. uh, cannot use the presenter's view you have to yeah that's perfect that was perfect yeah go ahead one minute so this is yeah. a 40 year old gentleman who presented following a road traffic accident and and uh, he had a, a lateral hofa fracture her uh, which uh, excuse me uh, just stop. tap on the slide once with the mouse it will start now so he presented with pain and swelling over the knee and uh, he was uh, and contusion so uh, when we carefully look at the x ray we see that there is a double shadow in the ap view in the articular surface and we are also able to see um, a impaction of the intracalorie depressed fragment and uh, so it is always we need to have a high index of suspicion and uh, to avoid missing these injuries as nearly 30% of these injuries are missed early so when we look at a ap view we can be deceiving because coronal plane fractures are not clearly visible and it can and the double shadow can be mistaken for a overlap of the patellar shadow and oblique views are more helpful helpful in these fractures than lateral view because it is easy to trace this articular surface there is in oblique view and find for any if there is any disruption of the articular surface so in 1978 lettner had classified these hofa fractures into three types type 1 is the one where there is a vertical fracture line which is along the which is a continuation of the posterior femoral cortex and type 2 fractures are purely articular fractures where they don't have any soft tissue attachment and type 3 fracture the fracture line is more oblique it can uh, when we look at the anatomy of soft tissue attachment in this fracture popliteus gets attached just inferior to the lateral epicondyle and lateral collateral ligament gets attached to the lateral epicondyle and gastrocnemius lateral head of gastrocnemius gets attached superior to the insertion of lateral collateral ligament and acl gets attached to the inner aspect of the lateral femoral condyle so when we go to the medial condyle mcl gets attached to the medial epicondyle and it has got a broad attachment to the tibia so when we look at the fracture types type 1 and type 3 the condylar segment has good soft tissue attachment but in type 2 fractures the soft tissue attachments are absent they they are devoid of any soft tissue attachment because they are purely articular fractures and when we look at the blood supply the main blood supply is from the extraosseous blood vessels that is superior lateral and medial geniculate artery and descending geniculate arteries these supply majority of the condyle when we look at the intraosseous blood supply the nutrient arteries are deficient in supplying the posterior aspect of the femoral condyle lateral et al lateral has described this and as, as as reported that these fractures that is those type 2 fractures where those involve only the posterior condyle they are more prone for avascular necrosis so our patient and uh, in our patient we find that there is a intracalorie depressed fragment this fracture has not been described by lateral so this is a variant of either type 1 or type 2 with intracalorie combination this has been described by robinson et al and this classification by yobin ct based classification which divides the distal femur into three regions a b and c by two lines that is one line is drawn 
in the mid diaphase mid diaphyseal line and the second line is a continuation of posterior cortical line of the femur divides the femur into three zones and this classification is based on on fracture line number of fracture lines and the fracture line where it exits anteriorly and the number of comminution and the comminution location in the uh, in the regions so based on these classifications our 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 patient has a lateral type 3 variant where the main fracture line is more oblique and there is a depressed intercalary fragment and um, whenever you select a approach we look at two important things with the approach whether we will be able to visualize the fracture and reduce it and whether we will be able to do the fixation of what we have selected through the same approach so when we do a lateral parapetalar approach we will be able to see nearly 80% of the lateral and anterior lateral condyle with the lateral parapetalar approach and this fracture falls within the 80% so with the lateral parapetalar approach we will be able to visualize this fracture and reduce it as well so similarly when we look at the condyle that is the hofa fragment we see that this fragment is fairly large and it is more than 20% of the 20% of the height of the lateral femoral condyle so when the fragment is large we will be able to get a good purchase with the antero posterior screw fixation itself there are various forms of fixation and biomechanical stu biomechanical studies have revealed that 6.5 mm cancellous screws are a higher load to failure Uh, compared to four uh, higher higher load to failure compared to four mm cancellous screws and a headless compression screws and adding a second screw did not significantly increase the stability however posterior to anterior screws were biomechanically more stable in resisting vertical shear force than anterior to posterior screw but when use when we use a posterior to anterior screw we have to use a headless compression screw and a smaller screw to minimize the articular surface damage and also to bury the screw within the articular beneath the articular surface so whenever the we suspect the patient will take a longer time to heal especially in the presence of osteoporosis the presence of severe comminution and the increased bmi we tend to combine plate with screw fixation plate can be either a neutralization plate or a buttress plate or a wrapped plate so we tend to use wrapped plate whenever there is a depressed intercalary fragment which we need to elevate and wrap it so the first step is to reduce the depressed intercalary fragment reduce it secure it kys and then with screws following it we use a subchondral plate which we have already contoured with the template at templating the lateral condyle and we also fix the elevated screw wrap it through the screws through the plate and to get a good purchase in the short distal fragment we have to direct the screws criss cross so that the our length of the screw increases and we also get a good purchase there so in this patient we are done we are position the patient supine then an antero lateral approach the flexing the knee helps us in two ways it helps us to visualize the fracture and it also relaxes the capsule and pull up gastrocnemius on the short distal fragment which helps us in reduction and the second step is to use joystick maneuvers where we use a steam and pin in the post anterior fragment and also a steam and pin in the short distal fragment with the steam and pin in the anterior in the anterior shaft fragment we elevate it so that space is created to pull the short distal fragment which has gone posterior to length and match it with the anterior fragment this pins also joystick also helps in controlling the rotation of both the fragment so uh, once we get the length which can be which we can know that we have achieved reduction by properly matching the inter digitations of the chondral surface this can be also known by matching the metaphyseal spike if it is present if the metaphyseal spike is comminuted we can also look into the end on view of the distal femur to see the notch of the distal femur and whether it has been reconstructed nicely once it has been reconstructed we secure it with kys following which we compress it with webbers clamp and get an antero posterior screw in and a subchondral arch plate to wrap the elevated depressed fragment this is a follow up at 6 months with a good functional functional outcome so this is a 28 year old gentleman who presented with the lateral 
Hofa fracture. Here the fracture line is more vertical, which is along, which is a, like a continuation of the posterior femoral cortex, and there is also an extension comminution more posteriorly. When we look at the CT, it is a type one fracture or a lateral type one fracture. Though it is not depressed much, there is extensive comminution of the posterior condyle, and we find that the fracture is extending nearly to the eighty percent of the height of the femoral condyle. We, for visualization, as we have already mentioned, to select an approach, we must see whether we can visualize it and reduce it, and whether we must we can fix it through the same approach. So, in this fracture with the lateral parapetalar approach, we will be able to see the fracture and reduce it. But to because this is a very short fragment, getting a posterior to anterior screw would be a better option, and it will provide more stability, which will which will make us more confident in doing an early mobilization. In some patients where there is a metaphyseal spike, adding a posterior buttress plate will increase the stability of the constrict. So, to get this posterior to anterior fixation, we might need to use a different approach. So, here we have combined two approaches: lateral parapetalar approach and a posterior lateral approach to get the fixation. So, we position the patient in the lateral position and do a direct lateral approach. We were not able to visualize the posterior extent of the fracture in this approach, so we did a Gerdes osteotomy to increase our visualization. Depressed fragments were elevated and brought to brought in position, and uh, through the posterior lateral approach, the plane between common peroneal nerve and biceps femoris, we exposed the posterior condyle and got a posterior to anterior screw fixation, and posterior lateral plating is completed. This is the final follow-up X-ray. So this is a 60-year-old gentleman who presented one month later to us with the medial Hofa fracture in a following a trivial fall. Hofa fractures are usually following a high-velocity injury. Sometimes these fractures can occur even with a low-velocity injury, especially in a osteoporotic patients. So this patient presented one month later with severe osteoporosis also. So when we look at the fracture, we see it is a type three fracture with a more oblique fracture plane. And the fracture line extends more anteriorly into the condyle, so we will be able to visualize with the, any anterior approach, either medial parapetalar approach or a subvastus approach. But since there was a more osteoporosis, we thought we will get a better fixation with the posterior to anterior screw fixation, and it because and it is more biomechanically stable in resisting vertical shear. So we used an extended medial approach for posterior posterior to anterior screw fixation. So we patient position the patient supine through the through a medial incision and uh, extend extended medial approach is done. Initially, the subvastus is muscle is erased from the is the medial intermuscular septum and gracilis, and the medial retinaculum is exposed. It is incised to see the anterior articular surface. This is the anterior arthrotomy, and then posterior MCL is visualized, identified. And posterior arthrotomy is done just posterior to the MCL to visualize the posterior condyle, which is through which headless cancellous screw fixation is done, and and the neutralization plate is done, and uh, is is aug uh, fixation is augmented with the neutralization plate. This is the final follow up with a good functional outcome. Sometimes um, uh, the more complex bicondylar fractures as are also common. These uh, Uh, these fractures are usually seen in open injuries. This uh, animation shows a simple technique to help in aid in reduction, where the uh, we pull the posterior aspect of proximal tibia anteriorly to reduce the displaced to help us in the reduction of displaced condylar condylar fragments. Here, uh, because there because there was a patella fracture, it has helped us in visualization. We get an end on view of the entire condyle, reduce it. Okay. and uh, initially secured with kys followed by multiple cancellous screw fixation resulting in a good functional outcome we do do bone grafting whenever there is a, a large defect following a elevation of a depressed fragment resulting in a huge void and um, and also in a non union scenario where getting the length of the condyle back results in a void and uh, which can be filled with the bone graft in by con the in the special situations such as in an elderly patient who is already osteoporotic with the severe oa changes a bicondylar hofa can under can be treated with the primary total knee replacement and our post operative protocol is we mobilize the patient 
and from the second post operative day start on knee movements non weight bearing for first 6 weeks partial weight bearing from 6 to 12 weeks and full weight bearing from 12 to 16 weeks exact so in conclusion and uh, we must be very have a high index of suspicion not to miss this fracture and um, ct scan is necessary to evaluate the uh, evaluate the fracture to plan uh, approach and to the fixation and um, whenever we see a type 1 lateral fracture one there, there is a large distal uh, the fracture exists in this fracture fracture exists more anteriorly and the distal fragment is very large so only anterior approach can be used for visualization and antero posterior screw fixation with the neutralization plate would be an ideal option whenever we see a type 2 fracture which is more posterior posterior approach for reduction and fixation through postero anterior screws when the, the whenever there is a metaphyseal spike a posterior buttress plate would increase the stability of the fixation when there is a variant type with more posterior combination combined approach uh, with the anterior and posterior approach anterior approach for visualization and posterior approach for fixation would be ideal a uh, way of doing it thank you mm-hmm.